All right, so we are going to make a bubble map of cities of California. And a bubble map is a map where instead of just putting dots on different places of importance, instead you put circles, and the circles are sized according to the magnitude of, of some variable. So you've got a big city, has a big bubble, you've got a small city, has a small bubble. You can also use this in scatter plots, but we're going to do it in a map today because it's way more fun. So, first thing you need is a map of California. Um, this is just a normal SVG map, and I'm going to cheat a little bit later on, and I don't know where things like LA or San Diego are, so by putting a map underneath my SVG map, I'm, ordered, I'm able to reference it when drawing my circle, so just something you'll want to have later on. And I'm going to click the little toggle visibility here in order to hide it, and then we're going to be good to go. So in order to make a bubble map, the most important thing you need is the ability to make bubbles. So we are going to use the ellipse tool. If this is the rectangle tool for you over here, what you need to do is click and hold and then come up with the ellipse here. So there are two ways, actually, um, two ways to make circles. Uh, the first way is clicking and dragging, and the second way is uh, just clicking once. And they each have their own ups and downs, let's say. So if I'm using the ellipse tool, I can click and I can drag and I'll make a circle. But is that a circle? No, it's not a circle. It's an ellipse. Um, we need the height and the width to be the same. So what you do is you have to hold down shift. So hold down the shift key as you are clicking and dragging and it will lock the height and the width to be the same and you will come out with a wonderful, wonderful circle. But maybe it won't be in the right place. You'll note that as I drag my circle out, I'm starting from the top left of the circle instead of maybe the center of the circle. So if I wanted to make San Francisco here, um, I would click and I would drag, and then I would have to move that circle to be back over to San Francisco, which seems like a bunch of crap. So there's another key. Um, so let's say shift um, makes a circle. And the other thing you want to do is Alt centers it. So if I am making San Francisco here, um, I pull it out. First I say, oh, it's not a circle. I hold down Shift, it becomes a circle, and then I hold down Alt, and it starts it from the point that I clicked. All right, fun and good. If I want to put a city down here, um, hold down Alt to make it centered, hold down Shift in order to make it a circle, and life is good. Same thing goes for just clicking once. So clicking once is good if you want to have a specific size of the circle. So when I click and I drag, um, in theory, I could look up at the info window and see how big my circle is as I make it bigger and bigger, but who really wants to do that? Um, let's say, you know, this one here is 24.694 millimeters. If I really, really wanted 25, what I would do instead is I would just click once and it would bring up this menu and I could just type 25 by 25, hit OK, and it would show up. This does the same thing with the upper left if you're not holding Alt. So let's say I click San Francisco and I say I want 30 by 30, it would show up down to the bottom right of San Francisco. What I do instead is I hold down Alt, I click San Francisco, 30-30, bam, right on San Francisco, everyone is happy. All right, so now that we know how to make circles, we need to figure out how to make circles that are related to numbers. So let's say we have two cities. Um, we have Little City, and it has, let's say, 50 people in it. And then we have uh, Big City, and big city has 100 people in it. So big city is twice as big as little city. Now, we are going to make a circle for little city. We're gonna hold Alt down, we're gonna click. We will say 50 by 50. We got a nice big circle there. Looking good, little city. Um, let me move that over there, give us a little more space. And then we're gonna make one for big city, which is gonna be 100 by 100. Right, so this is big city over here, um, big city 
we made 100 by 100. Little city, we made 50 by 50. Now, is big city, does the circle for big city seem to be twice as big as the circle for little city? No, it's absurd. It's way bigger than the circle for little city. So what's going on here? Um, all we did was double the numbers that should have worked. Well, the thing is that um, the human brain looks at, nope, the human brain judges size based on area, not on diameter. So when you type in a number, when you click with the ellipse tool, you say width and height are 100 or width and height are 20 or width and height are 10, what you're saying is draw me a circle with a diameter of 10. And the diameter is um, the distance from this side to this side. So all the way across, um, usually people talk about radius, which is that little green line from the center of the circle to the outside, but going all the way across, that is diameter. But the thing is, we need to figure out how to type in, um, we, we need something that has a 50 person area or 100 person area. We need to figure out what to type in in order to put in that diameter for that. So there's all kinds of math that's involved in it, but basically anytime you are making circles, you always use the square root of your data point. That's all in caps because it is so important and always the truth. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to say, okay, we have 50 people in Little City. Square root of that is 7, more or less. So let us make a city that is 7 by 7. That's Little City. And now we're going to do 100. And of course, the square root of 100 is 10. So now we're going to do 10 by 10. And if we look at those circles, they're not nearly as big as the other ones, but big city's area is twice as big as little city's area. So it's a little bit more realistic. It's a little bit more what human beings perceive. So always, 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 we're going to use the square root, which means that we are going to go into Excel. So that's hopefully where you've kept all of your data. Um, maybe use Google Docs, whatever you want to do. So right now, the size, let's think of this as actually the area. So we're going to cut and paste this here. We need to figure out the diameter for that. Um, and we're going to say square root. So in order to have a diameter of 4 million, or in order to have an area of 4 million, you need a diameter of 2,000. In order to have an area of 27,000, you need a diameter of 163. So let's draw Los Angeles. So Los Angeles is, uh, let's get that text out of the way. Keep those notes just so we remember. Los Angeles is down here, and we're going to say, OK, let us make, um, we're going to hold down Alt, we're going to click on Los Angeles, and we're going to say 2,000 by 2,000. And it is way too big. That's never going to work. It's never going to work, right? So the diameter that it wants to give us is 2,000. But we need to scale that back down to be a number that makes a little bit more sense. So what I suggest that you do is get your ellipse tool and draw however big you want LA to be. So LA is the biggest city. I want it to look pretty big. I say I'm going to go this big. That seems pretty good to me. Um, hopefully it also seems pretty good to you. Now what you need to do is find out how big this circle is. And over here we have the info window. It says it's about 77 width and height. If you don't have the info window open, go to the window menu and then go to info uh, and click that and then it should show up. If it already has a checkbox next to it, it's hiding somewhere on your screen. So what has to happen is somehow we have to turn this number of 2,000, so LA wants to be 2,000 millimeters, 
um, we want LA to be 77 millimeters instead. And what you do is all you do is divide. So, so uh, divide 2000 by 77, which is not Google Chrome, by 77, that is, let's say 26. And so what we're going to do is every single time we need to take the size a city wants to be, we're gonna say, no, you need to be 27 times smaller, AKA, um, yeah, we'll just go with 26 times smaller. So we're gonna go to Excel um, and we're gonna say, this is the, the diameter that it wants to be, desired diameter. And then we're gonna say actual diameter right here. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do, we found our magic number here. We divided 2000 by 77. We divided the size, the diameter that LA wants to be by the size that we want it to be, which is 77, 26 times smaller. So we're gonna say, we're gonna take this diameter, we're gonna divide it by 26, and then we're going to pull that down through all of these. And these are the actual diameters that we're going to use for all of our cities. Uh, so LA is gonna be 77, San Diego is gonna be 45 and a half, San Francisco, 35 and a half, and so on and so forth. So let's make the circles. First, we're gonna get rid of LA actually, because if we made a mistake in calculating, we're gonna to wanna to see that mistake come back again. Uh, and maybe it'll be way too big, or maybe it'll be way too small, and it's just kind of a way to check with yourself about it. So we're gonna make a new layer by clicking Create New Layer, and we're gonna call this City Bubbles, as that's what we're about to draw here. In our ellipse, we're gonna make sure to hold down Alt in order to center it. So holding down Alt, we're gonna click LA. It's gonna ask us, how big do you want it to be? We can just cut and paste this number in here if we'd like. So great, LA is huge. LA is the biggest thing we've ever seen. Um, now we need to do San Diego. Where is San Diego? Well, San Diego is actually hidden right now by the bubble that we just drew. So what we're going to do is we're gonna make the entire layer of city bubbles a little bit more transparent so we can see through it. So if you have city bubbles selected over here, you can go to the opacity menu up top and let's drop that down to say 40. So now we can see, oh look, San Diego right there looking good. We're gonna hold down Alt, we're gonna click San Diego. We're gonna type in say 45.5. Done, opacity, 40, you can now see through that. Um, what's the next one? San Francisco, 35 and a half. 35.5, 35.5, opacity, 40. Um, Fresno, let's say, let's go 28. Fresno, 28, 28. Let's drop our opacity down. Sacramento, 27. 27, 27. And Eureka is a lonely 6.3. So I'll drop that down to 40. I'll drop this down to 40. Okay, so one thing you can see is that all of these circles, here I'm gonna hide the background here. You can see that all of these circles kind of overlap each other and it doesn't look very good. I'm gonna be honest with you. So the reason why this happened is because I lied to you earlier. So what I said was I was gonna set the opacity of the entire layer to be 40% so that they would all blend into everything below. So you could see the outlines, so you could see the cities, so you can see all that. But what I did instead was I set the opacity of every single one of these circles to be 40. 
So then when two circles go on top of each other, they end up adding to one another. So we want to get rid of that. So the way to do that is we're going to select every single circle and we're going to change the opacity all at once. 100% wonderful, except it's not wonderful. They no longer have that weird overlap, but you can also no longer see the outline of the state underneath. So the way to change that is to actually change the opacity on the entire layer. So if you go to the right hand side of the layers palette, you can see these little circles. When you click these circles, that selects something on the screen in your artboard. And what you can do is if you pick the top one, it selects the entire layer, and then you can say, okay, 40% opacity, now it's the whole layer has 40% opacity, not each individual circle, so now they all blend together in a wonderful, beautiful way. And that's it. There you have your, uh, your bubble map. Um, if you wanted to, you could do something like, you know, change the color of Sacramento to be something else because it's the capital. Uh, probably don't want to do that because it looks terrible and ugly. But yeah, there you go.